Good morning, fishy people. My name's Alan Norrish from Fish On TV. It is Tuesday, the 6th of October. And as you've probably seen, we have just arrived at Hayfield Lakes. I'm in the queue now. We're just waiting for Noli, taking tickets and dishing pellets out as she does. She'll probably be stood there in a Star Wars bar outfit. And today I have booked the Island Lake. We are on the Torn Bank side, that's the river bank side, not the wood side. And we've got uh, peg numbers from 1 to 29. And there are 20, uh, no, no, 20 others. There's, we've got quite a few away. There are 17 of us today, I think. So we'll find out when we add all the numbers up. So I'm just pulling forward now. Um, so a decent turnout. It's that time of year now. Colder days, colder nights, shorter nights, uh, shorter days, longer nights. So even though it is a bit of a feeding season for the calf, you've still got to be careful with your feed. It's it's funny. It's a funny time of year. It's like the sort of spring coming out of winter, going into springs. You know, do you do you go into your summer gear and uh, it's. It's like an in-between, what shall we do today? Um, all depends where I get drawn, because I'm not sure at this time of year what the best pegs are. I mean, everybody wants to be around the island, but I'm not quite sure. I'm, I don't think I'd be disappointed near the island, but I'm not sure whether it performs. So we shall see where we get drawn, and then we'll discuss what we're going to do. So we'll, we'll probably see Noli next. Tony's just coming up to have a quick chat. So before he interrupts, we shall see you at the draw. So we'll see you soon. First in the bag, saws. Peg one. Peg one. Where is it? Oh dear. Eleven. Peg eleven. Whoa. Two ones. Two ones. <laughs> Two ones. Andy girl. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. <laughs> Mr. Incredible. Whoa. Peg nine. Right. Simon Hudson. 17. 17. Graham Scott. 27. Mick Smith. 22. Dave Eccles. I forgot what I want. I forgot the number. 29. All the best guys. Am I 21 now? Yeah. Charles, number 6. six. 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 Alan. One. So I've drawn peg one. Top end. Soz wanted that peg. Don't know why. I've never fished it. I do know that Dave Bailey will maybe match this one there. So we shall see how we get on today. See you on the bank. Here we are then on peg one. It's the end peg. Never fished it before. Soz has been down. I've put loads of pressure on me saying that I should, I should win it easy. But I've not had a bite, a line, or nothing so far. A late as usual, getting ready. I've had a little look short. Um, I've got corn and soft pellets for short. Um, just by, just been firing a few eight mil pellets, and actually, I've just noticed now. I've been out there on the bomb. I'll just show you. I've just noticed now that there are some bubbles going up there, which. Not seen for an hour while I've been putting pellets in. So just there, there are them three landed. There are a few uh, bubbles turning up there. It tells me that there could be some bream or carp in it or something there. So I need to have a look on that. But what I've done, I've got an hybrid feeder set up and I've just gone over to the far peg. I've got a wafter and micros on there. 
But I've not had a line, I know nothing. What I did do, I spent 10 or 15 minutes, because I know there's some nice bream in here, and it's something I've never done before here. I've put eight feeder fulls away from this peg to my left hand side here, uh, at about 20 metres. And I've noticed there's some bubbles coming up there as well. So my plan there is, is a little cage feeder and corn or soft pellet. And just see if we can get some of those bream. If it's, a, if it's an hard day, I've not seen anybody catch anything yet. Um, if it's a tough day, let's target those. But with me being the end peg as well, I've never really done much, apart from when I've pleasure fished, which is completely different to a match. I've never done much in the margins here. I've plumbed up to the next, there's a platform to my left and I've gone for about two and a half foot of depth and it's just, it just drops off a little bit so I can pull it into the ledge. I'm hoping I might get some later on there. That's the plan. So I'm going to have a couple of goes on this long. I've got a pellet waggler set up because like I said, I've never fished this area before. I've just no idea, it's like a, a new lake to me. I've never been this far down. But end pegs usually, you can usually do okay, but I've not. I mean, when we turned up, there were fish everywhere. As soon as the nets went in, I've not seen one since. It's just typical that, you know, like, Nigel side of me is going, whoa, look at all the fish down here. They've gone. <laughs> no signs of them whatsoever. And they were just everywhere. Um, but we've just not had a sign, I think, Nigel. Said, what you had, Nigel? A couple of roach? There's a two perch and a roach, and it's just... But no liners, no nothing, not a thing. But it is that funny time of year. So I'm classing that one there as a bit of a throwaway peg where I've put quite a bit of bait in, hoping I might get some bream. And, uh, you know, um, I'm not going too light on the line. I've got uh, 017, if I need to go light, if I think it's just bream, I can go down to 015, but with um, a quick stop on and corn. And I can put pellet on there, I can put worm on there. Uh, just to see if, if it's going to be a tough day, just see if we can get some things on there. But I mean, we all know carp will eat worms, soft pellets and, ca and corn. So I've tried to keep it as simple as that. It's taken me an age to get ready. I didn't really, I'd not got enough ready last night, actually. But we're all ready now and we're fishing, but no fish at all. So I'll give you some updates. As we go along, it's looking pretty bleak at the minute. Do you remember when Soz drew this peg, he comes second on this peg last time and he said he didn't catch until the last hour, he said he got the odd one. And uh, there's just nothing happening at the minute. So I keep putting a few pellets out there. I can go on the waggler there, I can go on the bomb there, so, and short here. So we'll see how we get on. See if we can catch anything on any of those lines. So we'll see soon. All right, folks, there's been not a lot to report at all. It's been raining and what have you, but I've tried three different lines and I have not had a bite. In fact, I've just had my first liner. I just cannot seem to get a bite on anything. I've been out and bomb and pellet. <coughs> I tried the skimmer line and it looks like there's fish there because there's bubbles there. But I've just not had any indications whatsoever. Um, I noticed one or two fish showing the faces, so a little bit on pellet waggler. Normally this time of year, but a little bit deeper, I've had it about four or five foot. Uh, not an indication there. Uh, nothing on the hybrid feeder long. I've just come towards the middle a bit with the hybrid feeder, nothing. And I've just gone over with the method feeder over where I've been feeding pellets. Um, and I've not had a bite yet three hours in and I've not had a bite. Crikey, I just hope my margins uh, take off. Yes, this is, uh, it's like, what do you do next? I can't seem to get a bite anywhere. Due to go back on my short line to have a little, another little look there. Nigel lost one on Maggot earlier. And he's fishing, uh, he was fishing about three foot deep, I think, on Maggot. That's his that's first bite. Well, apart from those little perch, might be that he's had. It's, First decent fish I've seen. I know Soz has got one, and I think Mr. Incredible's got one. I heard somebody say they've got a big one down there. But I can't really see anybody else. 
It's looking absolutely awful today. Isn't it? Another liner there, look. So, I'm not sure what to do next. I've got to go try my skimmer line again over there. See if we can get something and my short line. But there's just nothing happening. I mean, it's, it's calm right down. That would probably be ideal for pellet waggler now. It was a bit, uh, bit of a breeze on when I went on it earlier. But it's just not happening at all. Let's get a few more pellets. And these pellets, they just seem to go, they've got a mind of their own. I'll give you mushy some stick for casting these pellets in my pen, but I can see why now, because if you get if you get a batch that are a bit misshaped, some bigger than others, they just go wherever they want. I'm not finding a lot of pellets, you know, three or four, and that's it, and I'm not doing it very often. It's that time of year now, it's funny time of year. Like I say, that one, the, the one on my left is out with me swim here. I've put quite a lot of bait down there. Oh, there's a cruiser now here, that's the first cruiser I've seen since this morning when we turned up. There were fish everywhere, but as so I went next went in, they disappeared. So it might be worth another little go on the pellet waggler while it's calm like this. So I'll give you, it's pretty poor, very poor in fact, I'll give you an update. If I get anything, it's, uh, it's feeling pretty bleak. I just hope my margins kick in, so over and out, see you soon. Uh, I've gone into my short line. Bumped a few little perch off on maggot. Tried corn, I had nothing. I've been feeding corn and micros. And then I had a skimmer. And then I bumped another little tiny little see-through perch off. And then a few bubbles appeared. And I put a piece of corn on and I hooked into this. And let's hope we can keep these coming now. But God, it's been abysmal. Shocking. It's been rock hard. I mean, there's Nigel at the side of him not had any car. There's John at the right of him not had any car. I don't, I'm not sure if Chris has had one or not. I think Mr. Incredible. He might have had one. I know Soz has had one or two. And I've seen somebody else with a bent rod. I don't know which was being caught, but this is the first sign of a decent fish. At last! God, it's been painful. I've not fished up here. It feels like I'm fishing a different lake to Afield Lake. I've never ever fished up this end. I've always been down bottom. Yeah, so it's a decent sized car. Oh, it's a good one as well. bite as well and he's got to be he's at least eight eight to ten pound god Bennett is that heavy he's bending one net over so he's still I don't, I don't just hate it when they wrap round like that stay bloody still I can't get between my legs it's that fat Fish. I know you're not very happy, but I just can't keep it between my legs to keep him still. Gosh, got it wrapped everywhere. There, I'm not going to get him out. Hooks. He's not happy, but let's just get the hook. Look at that, that's a right lump, isn't it? Oh, I do feel better now, I've had a bite or two. Because 
I'd had no bites for three and a half hours. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Ah, there the skimmers that we're after. These are the skimmers that I'm hoping to get on the feeder out there. I've definitely got to go and have another look out there if this uh, dries up at the minute. I'm getting one or two other funny little... I'm getting little bites. Uh, not bad those, are they? Oh my catch your nose. And when you're lifting on... Normally I'd lift when it, it's a little tap. And I have been doing. I've just not been getting, there's been no fish on the end. I've actually been waiting until it actually goes under and it's so far so good. I'm, I can't count my chickens just yet, can I? Just squashed up a little slightly over soaked micros because there's a toe left to right and it's quite a heavy toe. I've got a 4B18's float on it, it's quite a heavy float really. Just to try and slow it down a little bit. And if I just hold back on it slightly, but it does lift the float when you do that. In theory, it should create that little tight arc on the bottom that we're after to show a good indication. Just drop that in there and I've noticed once that goes to the bottom, have you ever noticed when you put ground bait in that you see bubbles coming to the top? Well the bubbles start moving to the right <laughs> so the bait's definitely moving along the bottom. So I'm not too worried if the float and my hook bait is moving as well because the fish will obviously be used to the bait on the bottom moving when there's a tow like this. And now I've said that, it's not actually towing too much now. Brilliant. It's just not quite settled right, that floats. Because it's a gradual slope. If I go out, uh, say, three or four inches there, I've just had a s little tiny indication there. And the ovens look like they're going to open again. Oh dear. I hate it when we brolly up. It sounds like there's a storm coming. I might have to. I'm going to have to switch you off. I was hoping you might see a bite in a fish. Probably said that. It's been quiet for three and a half hours. I'm going to have to get my brolly, I think. There, you see, a little indication. If they were F1s, you'd be hooking them. I've found if you just leave it until you get a more positive bite. Now I know that line now will be going left to right. It's just about straight. There we go and hold it. Oh dear. Right, it's time to turn you off, protect the camera. Well, so I just waited for a few little taps. I just waited for a positive bite and it looks like we're into another one. Hopefully, nah, I just wonder if they've turned up. I hope they have, because I've not seen, I've not had any indications whatsoever for, for hours. I'm beginning to think, am I going to get water leaked? That's how bad it felt. I was getting, not desperate, but it was like, <laughs> what do I do next? I've not got bullying gear on. Jeff will go mad. It's only a 10, 12 elastic, so I'm actually thinking skimmers might show more than carp. But nothing's shown, to be honest, until this last sort of half an hour. Just gotta be patient. There's Take your time, just hope that the hook doesn't pull. <laughs> I had a bad run of that. That could knock your confidence. You're tying them wrong. I just, like I say, I, I just think I had a 
I just think I had a lot of bad luck. Let's just hope I can get it in without damaging the camera too much. It's putting more of a battle up than that. Get big one. Oh, I should have had him there. That was my chance. Come on, Nosh, get him in. He's put in a mighty battle up for a, well, I'm not going to say a tiddler, but for a small car. I had my chance, he gave me a, a second or so, didn't he? Are they going to come up this time? Yes, get in. Oh. He's about four or five pounds, so. We can't complain at that, can we now? Because I was thinking, I'm going to be what a uh, No, I'm not. Don't forget there's something today. If I win today, and I think it's highly unlikely because they've got to be catching down the island and it's a double, but We shall see, won't we? We shall see. A nice piece of corn on there. Don't like it with me, bro. Nigel's just been brock outside of me. And we've got another one. Unbelievable, isn't it? Not a thing for three hours something. <laughs> I think I had one liner. And I've had two skimmers and two carp and hooked into this one inside 25 minutes or so. Ghosty. Come on. Come on, you wanted to give in. Show your face. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, just couldn't quite get there. You this time. Yes. He still wanted to swim while he's in the net. Can you believe it? Right, that's a good six or seven pounder. Thanks for that. 
around the bloody fins. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah. He tried his damnedest there, didn't he? There we go, a little ghosty. Well, not a little ghosty, he's about six or seven pound. Well, that's unbelievable. Nothing in three, you know, three hours, 20 minutes, and then 20 odd pounds in 25 minutes with two hours to go. So, can we get some more? And it's just stopped raining, so. Oh, you're like, get at your kid with umbrella. Umbrella up, umbrella down, coat on, coat off. Right, let's see how we get on. Right, rolling down. Oh, it went a bit funny, it started raining again. I just kept firing pellets out there and I've just gone on the pellet line and it's steaming up a bit. Four minutes in. Very strange bite, but enough to lift into. And I've got a carp. I've fed my margin. I've refed that short line. I've got to have another look on that because I did uh, really well for about half an hour, but then it went funny. And a quick look on this. How rude. <laughs> the battery went flat. But I've got them to hand, so it was a quick change. Like I was saying, I just went back out on the pellet line. I've not had a sign all morning on that. And this is the first indication on the bottom further out anywhere. He's putting a right mighty battle up. There he is. I want him to go now. Can't believe it's a big one. It's coming reasonably easy, isn't it? And this this won't be as big as that last one, the first one that I caught. Like any, any, anything in it, anything a bit younger, a bit more virile. Yeah, it's only about four pound ish. Let's play right, battle up. Oh You're a fit thing, very fit. Nicely done. Damn busy, look at that. Get in, get in your belt. Oh, good scrap, that son, good scrap. Well, it's not bloody raining again. Right, I think I've got to go out there again and have another quick look. Four minutes isn't a long time to wait, is it? So, Let's have another quick look, because I am wanting to have a look at my margin. There's about an hour and 15 to go. If there's nothing there, I'll only have a quick look, just to see if there's any movement. Not 
too many. Nothing, nothing on that pellet line. I thought this were a skimmer at first. Just a lazy car. Oh, he's getting into gear now. He's going through gears. This short line, I refed it and it went funny. First put in for about two minutes. Nice little positive bite. Just holding it back on that toe. Straight under. Ah, having a go now. So about an hour to go, less than an hour to go now. Oh, an hour, one hour left. Show me who's boss, isn't he? That's for certain. What's a decent size as well. That's weird, isn't it? Them little ones go absolutely crazy. Hooked into a nice one, I think, in the margin. It felt really slow and deliberate. I just lifted it. Oh! Gosh, that was a nice fish, that, you can tell. Oh dear, first one today. Nice fish as well, that. Damn it. You can tell when they're neither nice, slow and heavy. Right, let's get back in. Just gone in again. And this little bite looked like a roach, but you, can't, you can never tell to start with. And then it went under again, and I hooked into this. Let's see if we can keep this little beauty on. He's not wanting to come in, is he? Hmm. Is it a big one or is it one of them young fittens? I remember being young and fit once. <laughs> Let's have a look. It doesn't feel as big as the last one. At least it's another carp and there's half an hour. How long we got? 34 minutes. size a lot bigger than I thought but the other one felt a lot heavier than that. That's got to be about eight or nine pound again.
He's only got one eye. Right, there we go. Another decent lump. He might even be ten pound him. So there we go. Imagine Fisher Afield at last. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nothing for a few put-ins. I've had a skimmer on the short line. I refed the margin, gone back in, and I've just hooked into this one. And there's ten minutes to go. Set off like a steam train. This one with all the others. Just been nice and steady. Let's just hope he stays on. He's wanting to go on a run. All I've been feeding, I've been feeding ground bait and corn with a few micros in. And then when I actually go over it, I go over with some really softened down micros. You could just put it into a paste almost if you want. I don't squash it into a ball, just just enough so it's like a mouthful for them and then I put the corn straight over the top of it. That's what I've been doing. I mean I've tried it here before and all I've had is roach. But I am the end peg so I suspect that I might get one or two in the margin which I've not really done before at Hayfield. I find it very strange for margin fish here. Not heard a lot from Sod. I've just heard him chelp now. I don't know he's... He's chelping at somebody. He can't help himself, can he? He's got to chelp at somebody. Looks like John's into one as well. I've not seen John get too many. Come on, fish. I hope he's a great munter again. Be nice. I used to pull socks off at elastic to try and get them in quick, but of, of late I've just been letting them go on a run and then just slowly pull. And it's been working a little bit better of late. Seem to be landing a lot more fish. You <laughs> watch it, hook will pull out now. There's no rush, it's, it's hard, it's been hard enough to catch them today, so no point rushing. Do with him in though, have another chance of one more. I do suspect round the island they're going to have more than what I've got today. I fancied it round the island today, but obviously that sauce fancied it here. Because I know he had a good day, but it was... It was summertime when he bagged up here. A little bit different. To, we're almost into winter, aren't we? Well, that's my excuse for not catching on the knob pound. <laughs> the biggest margin fish but they all count and they will all do very welcome at this time of year now there we go it's got to be about five pound that's put down 40 odd pound now so about 42 i think something like that i've got 38 in my clicker but i think i've got i forgot to put one on
Right, it is the day after. It got a little bit rainy, a little bit late, a bit dark. Just didn't fancy uh, doing the uh, roundup in all that. I'm not sure how it looked in the camera. I mean, it's not great today, as you can see. But uh, anyway, we're all weighed in. And as I suspected, it wasn't just me being semi-skinned. It's fished hard. Um, very hard indeed. I, I mean, at one point I really did think I wasn't going to get a bite. About three and a half hours. One liner in three and a half hours. That's all I had. And I don't think I'd, I'd got my short line set up just right. The only thing I was worried about, well, I wasn't worried because it, it was a throwaway peg. I just wanted to try putting quite a bit of bait in an area that wasn't going to really affect my peg being the end peg. And I put it on to, on to, the, to the left as a skimmer line. There was eight feederfuls of ground bait and uh, corn and, and micros. But eight feederfuls, it's still not a great deal. I mean, the feeders are only that big. It's only like two big pots at the very, very most. Um, and I wanted to try that for skimmers on the uh, on the feeder because there's a good head of skimmers in there which you'll find out about shortly. But my match, top two and two in about six foot just on the slope, had that set up lovely. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I was fishing micros, soft pellets and corn. Bomb line, nothing. Pellet waggler. I fished the pellet waggler. I did start at about six foot, then I shortened it to about five foot. I went up and down the depths a little bit and didn't really have, well, I had nothing. I had no bites, but Franny went to about seven or maybe eight foot, he said. He said it were, it were too long. It felt too long, really, for his rod, but he actually got one or two at that depth. So we are in about 12 to 14 foot of water. I had a five and a half stroke six second count with a one ounce bomb where I was. So it's very, very deep. So I also set a hybrid feeder up because I had seen one or two fish. But we were rather fish topping everywhere right over the other side. Um, I would say probably two meters short of the uh, platform, which again will be on that slope. Nothing, not a liner. So. <laughs> I'm running out of options there. I'm thinking, well, what can I? So I tried the method feeder over the. I tried the. I tried the skimmer line. I didn't. I never had a bite on that all day. I put the method feeder with ground bait and a couple of maggots on that, with um, a little wafter on that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. Went over the bomb bomb line with the bomb. Nothing. Tried the method feeder over the bomb line. Nothing. I was really running out of the only place that I'd not tried was the margins, but I, I don't like to try them. I don't like to ruin them during the day. I know a lot of people will go in there from the office stuff, but it's not what I do. I like to try them in the last sort of hour and a half, two hours, say. Usually the last hour for me. And then eventually, with about two hours to go, little blob of micros and corn. A couple of funny little bites, had a skimmer, and then it went bang. And I had a, I think as you saw, it was about £10, £9 or £10. And then I had a few more. And a couple of skimmers. It, it was unreal. That went funny for a little bit. Out on the bomb, four and a half minutes in, I had a small carp. So the fish just turned up a little bit. And my first margin fish in a long time, decent margin fish. I've been pestered with roach all year. I hooked into a proper lump. It felt very heavy. Very heavy and slow and deliberate. It, it, it was no rush. It was just solid. I thought that's a nice fish. It felt a lot heavier than the 10 pounder. I know the biggest are the ones that always get away, but you just know. I just thought, wow, this is, and I think I mentioned it just before the bloody hook pulled out. But I'm not complaining. I'm not getting very many hook pulls at all. So all, all I can think of is that that just wasn't hooked properly. You might have just got it just in the top lip or you don't know if it were foul up just inside at face. You, you don't know. I don't think it were foul up because it, it, it was too deliberate the way it were moving. So I did end up having a few more in the margins and I ended up with a surprisingly in the last sort of two hours at the most. Yeah, two hours, I'd say two hours and ten minutes. I've ended up with where am I? 49 pounds zero four and just before if anybody thinks what well, they're strange numbers it's measured in one hundredths it's digital scales so let's get on to the results there are only eight people that have weighed in 
So I, I did think it was fishing very, very difficult. So in fourth place, he was on peg 21, a favoured area near the island with 32 pounds, 38. Dave Eccles, what a mighty fisherman you are. Well done, son, catching some of those Carasios. We know that that's Carasio Alley around there. And in third place, he must have had his 45 pounds, zero two. He's had at least 40 pounds of skimmers. There were one carp in there and it were a pleasure to see it. He's had a cracking day's fishing and to see a nice net of silvers like that, that's what I wanted in mind. I mean, he's caught them at 11 metres, and I think he was just using maggot with the sound of it. He's, he's ended up with £40 of skimmers and a car for £45, zero two. In third place, Simon Hudson, well fished on. What a mighty fisherman you are. Very well done, and nice to see all them skimmers. So, busy day that for him. Great. And in second place, damn it. £49.04 and literally seven ounces, six or seven ounces, and I had a skimmer that come flying out and the big one that I lost. <sighs> Me in second place. Nearly did the double. So what a mighty fisherman I am today. But I feel disappointed. Well, it was yesterday actually. I feel a bit disappointed. I'm so unlucky. Because in first place, he's had a couple on the waggler at about eight feet. Ah, oh, where are you, Franny? And he was fishing peg 13, just off the island. He's £49.50, that's £49.5, £49.8. Ounce. Franny Hobson, what a mighty fisherman you are. And I could have bloody strangled him when I saw a weight. <laughs> I knew we were going to be close when I lifted the nets out, but well done, Franny. That's, a, that's, that's good, is that? Because there's not a lot of weights turned out. I mean, we've got 20s and late 20s for the rest of the uh, the guys um, a very strange days fishing for me that I, it's a long time since I've gone since I've had sort of three and a half hours without a bite and then you end up with nearly 50 pounds so very strange day it's getting to that time of year less feed lighter rigs and a little bit more patience needed I think the bagging days, the shallow days, I mean, don't get me wrong, you'll get one or two silver shallow, you may get one or two shallow, but I think those days are nearly out of the window, so <laughs> it's patience season, I think, but you never know, you can still have some great days in winter. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed two days insights to Hayfield Lakes. Um, we've only got, I think it's another week or two left for our season for the biggest fish and biggest weight. Um, Next week, I'm going to try and book the kennel at uh, Woodhouse Grange if I can. If not, it could be Winfields or Tornbank, something like that. So we shall see you on the bank next week. I've got a golden rod in a couple of weeks' time. We'll see how we get on there. So don't forget, if you do enjoy my videos, don't forget to click the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And if you click the notification bell, you will get our videos as we upload them. So once again, thanks for watching. And we shall see you on the bank next week. Don't forget, guys. Fish on.